Hello, my name is Vsevolod. You can call me just Seva. Now we'll discuss how to make your first mobile project effective. And great thanks to Yaroslav, who is co-author of the presentation. Today, with Dell 5C4, it's easy to start a mobile project. We have just everything we need. Predefined interface patterns and bunch of code snippets shipped with Delphi for functional prototyping. After your first Hello Mobile World application, you are ready to start your effective project. What is the idea? First and evident, go to App Store and look what is already done. Second, review your abandoned desktop projects. They may get better second life on mobile. Third, just look around like I do. You can make an effective mobile project just in any area. Let's discuss a number of ideas and prototypes. I like jogging. I can't say I jog every day, but I take any chance to be fit. I have a special headphone set, sports style, to listen to my favorite music when jogging. And I have a special thing to carry my iPhone, so I can receive calls and play music during my exercises. Aside from jogging, there are many other ways to, for to forget about your bugs. The idea is clear, and this is not just idea. We can talk about a mission. Let the people be more effective in sports. First, at the level of an individual. We should be able to record our parameters every time we do gym. Then we can make plans and historical analysis. It's time to brand our application. Sport Diary. No, trivial. Your records. To abstract. Personal Digital Trainer. PDT. No, abbreviation I hate. Gym Win. Sounds good. Me Coach. Too fashionable. Bro Gainer. Mm, okay, let it be Beta 1. But the best advice is let your boss brand your app. The scenario is like this. I get notification, I press the button when ready and start training. I uh, select uh, the, ex the exercise from one to another, go from one from the list to another exercise. And after I've done, uh, I, I select done, partially done or too easy for me and then I finish the training. Now I can think of something like that. We have two roles, me and my trainer. I can only follow the training routine composed by the trainer. For me personally or as a member of some group level advanced. The trainer can see my achievements and let me go to the next level with a new training routine. If this is a personal software, I can merge two roles in one and use one simple mobile application. Ok, after we have made up a scenario, we can compose a mock-up. Usually we use special software like Balsamic. But in our case, the GUI prototype can be done right in Delphi, and Delphi allows, allows fast prototyping. It doesn't mean Delphi at the moment has tools to do mockups, but Delphi is very fast to sometimes skip this step and do prototypes right in the IDE. In our case, it's simple. We've got a series of screens changed by command or once all the exercise is done. Of course, the interface will be generated automatically from the training routine retrieved from the app server or database. I've done this prototype by a new project uh, selecting one of the predefined patterns, header footer with navigation as we need to build uh, as we need to have a built-in changes of screen. It's easy and we have uh, by default two tabs and the button next uh, with the uh, action list already um, already ready to change our screen. So the second screen is uh, just blank because we need to auto-generate the content. Thus I'm saving and then running the project just to see how it works on the simulator. Of course it's quite okay with the real device. 
but, um, I have a VNC viewer run on my Windows machine. I can switch to the Mac and uh, oh, sorry, the cursor is not <laughs> depicted correctly, but I can just emulate and test how a sportsman uh, works with the software. If I done this exercise, I press done and switch to the next. I can automatically or upon completion or just manually go to the second screen or maybe go back. So you can easily repeat my prototype and go further to your effective mobile project. You need just to look into the header footer with navigation pattern, uh, then uh, review the data snap labs by, for example, by Pavel Glavatsky uh, to, to make the communication between the mobile application and the, your app server. And uh, it's okay to start with iOS tutorial published on our site, then local and push notification uh, at uh, our CodeRage mobile by Anders Olsen. And uh, if you want not to see today or plan your exercises from your mobile application, you should look into the iOS date picker code snippet. Uh, shipped with Delphi and as you grow you can go further and look into other demos and enrich your application in functions. Once we're done we need to sell our project. As the idea was taken from nowhere or around us somebody can say I know some similar systems. First let's talk about mobile front end. It's easy with Delphi. Second def different sports like Taekwondo my son is doing imply different training plans so you can definitely be unique not in functional model but in business logic. Some fitness centers can use mobile apps to hold their customers. My local gym offers downloading my training plan in doc format file. That's ridiculous. Local notification can improve the discipline. Even if there is an exact copy of this project, we can add elements of artificial intelligence, I like neural networks, to better fit your level, your intensity and your goals. So we can beat any competitor if combine good business ideas with a good technology. We have just invented a project for sports and business. Let's go down to pure business. This idea was totally taken from the already existing project. A friend of mine uses Delphi and works for Garant company. They produce and sell Russian legislation database systems built with Delphi. They also have totally free mobile app and app store, small copy of the big database so-called home encyclopedia. Many people every day explore App Store like you surfing the internet. Huge traffic. The very existence of your application can, can improve brand awareness and invite people to taste more, like a trial version. The application for brand awareness is rather simple. First screen with icons, images. Click once, go to the next screen. Then we can see the list of items. T list box with T list box items predefined. Click a specific item, go to next screen. Then finally you can see the text which is scrollable or you can go to the next page. The application was done before Delphi with iOS development support, but we can easily reproduce it in some hours. I mean of course functional prototype. Like previously let's start a new project with uh, header footer with navigation pattern as we need to switch between some screens. It's just a typical. And then you automatically, by default, you got, you, you've got uh, three ta tab items, but I manually add the third because we need three screens. It's just a simple images, simple like traditional. Uh, you can switch the orientation of the form and uh, images are well aligned because I used uh, grid layout components uh, for images to be properly aligned uh, as the cells in some invisible grid. Then tab number two, it's just a trivial list a list box with items, uh, special lookup style, not special standard lookup style from the list. And finally you can get the third 
tab with the simple memo to store some text information. That's all. Then we are, we are about to run the application. We can select the 32-bit Windows platform. I don't recommend, but because the results uh, are a bit ugly, yeah, it's, it's not the iPhone, but you can just click and be sure that everything goes goes or goes you planned. And then you can switch to the iPhone simulator or real device. Why iPhone? Because uh, um, the, the screen is okay. With iPhone on my simulator you can switch and uh, be sure that the functional prototype is quite okay and ready to be upgraded to the final good version. In case of iPad form factor all images are also aligned properly. Once again, you need a header footer with navigation pattern, and uh, if you uh, you may want uh, to store your data not in statically in the components, but in the data some database, so you can use the uh, IB Lite, our um, DBMS Lite platform. It's free for you with some little limitation, and please find the iOS IB Lite code snippets to run the demo and be aware how to implement the DB storage. Once again, iOS tutorial, but uh, the main component is just an image uh, similar to VCL image component, and uh, as, as you may as you may see, the last screen wasn't uh, good enough because it uh, uh, shows plain text. You can use the T Web Browser component uh, to show not the plain text but the HTML uh, text with uh, some markups and uh, good style. You can also keep this uh, the HTML in the DB and um, upload and show in the browser. It's a good upgrade of this application to look uh, to look like uh, the basic uh, prototype. It's a part of this construction. There was a serious problem with this project. A designer miscalculated the stairs so someone could hit his head. Initially it was a straight line here, but then it took time and money to remove this of concrete. These pieces of concrete were drilled off and removed. It was necessary just to make this construction at least usable. So I've got an idea to make a FireMonkey 3D project to solve type of problems. But PC is not as portable as tablet, so I decided uh, first to abandon and then to renew the project. And now it's good prototype for Win, Mac and mobile iOS. For desktop you see Windows, but no problem on Mac. Uh, we can build up a model, then rotate and see the construction from other side. The point is that it took only hours to make this work. t dummy component and red means dangerous selling. A good idea to make this application 100% available on iPad. The designer did have iPad but he used it just to listen to Wi-Fi radio. So what do we have? We have a project group uh, stairs uh, which contains the desktop project and then the mobile project. One more project is just to test the class. So we have a viewport uh, 2D form as a desktop main form and viewport and uh, some uh, sources uh, of material. Uh, it's uh, made changes since Delphi XC2. So some dummy components just to make easier the rotation and uh, grid and rectangle to indicate the selling. Uh, the interesting is the stairs class is pass when uh, where you can find the T, T stair class derived from T mesh and uh, the main method to make your own mesh for me it's uh, just a sector of a circle to to model a stair just 
to implement the rebuilt mesh. A little bit of mathematics, but uh, it's, uh, the subject is well well discussed in the past since Delphi and first FireMonkey, Delphi X2 and FireMonkey, so no problem to use. Then I made an add a mobile project from scratch and uh, um, made a migration just one to one, the same components, the same viewport, the same main to deform and uh, I used the viewport 3D uh, just to render 3D model uh, because uh, uh, viewport 3D can accept the gestures. So in desktop uh, you can uh, zoom the model by mouse wheel and on iPad is unavailable so we're using the gestures like um, uh, typical for iPad to zoom the construction as you like. Thus we can run the application on the simulator and of course on the device and look how it works. So we can change the orientation, yes, uh, turn left to the most appropriate position and uh, use use toolbar buttons to rotate the model etc. Maybe it's quite okay to add more gestures to make the interface more interactive or add the second tab uh, as we have a 2D form to set the parameters of the construction. Once again what we have got? The same project group on the unified code base for Win, Mac and iOS. Yes, I've copied the components from one form to another, but without changes, this is not necessary. I'm thinking of using not the same code base, but exactly the same code. The designer, of course, can use expensive cats, but his construction is built from predefined blocks without blueprints. So even this application can keep him from mistakes in future, like rebuilding the construction all over again. If you have similar task or similar idea, go ahead. FireMonkey 3D is available since XE2 and now it has only some little changes like using material instead of set of properties. You need to play with 3D primitives, got T-Mesh if you need to have objects which are specially shaped like stairs in my case. And please look into interactive gestures code snippet to see how to do zooming on tablets. Let's look how mobile applications can improve the decision making process. We'll play a business game. All similarities are accidental. The guys are real and the situation is training like. We are are going to organize a Delphi developer seminar and there are three alternatives. Where? Moscow, St. Pittsburgh and Kyiv. Three of us have different opinions. Nobody wants to support the other. Client server or multi-tier? Monolithic or service oriented? What's the best user's interface? What's the most effective architecture? Where to go for a party? You know what I'm talking about. Too many alternatives, too many opinions. We need to come to a conclusion and make a choice among some alternatives. It's great to have one number for one variant. We will have a single data snap server and many mobile clients. While mobile, because during meetings we all have iPhones, iPads, fingering them without a goal. Let's use them as a control panels for voting. And of course all the data will be stored in a database. Hey, what about our boss? He would also vote, but he'll have his factor 3.0 to lead us according to the strategy. If you don't still follow the example, let's have a look at the situation from the other side. We have some variants where to go to have a party. All the variants can be described by a number of factors. I mean, this method is applicable to just any decision-making process. We can calculate the value of every variant by the following formula, which apparently gives some objective comparison. And of course, we can take into account the expertise of every participant. So let's make a functional and uh, interface prototype of our project. So we have two projects. First is the data snap server, created uh, regularly just as a data snap server, and it will be uh, 
single VCL application, that's enough. It's it's okay. It works fine. And then then we have a uh, we, we run it. Okay, it's up and running. And now we go to the our mobile prototype. This is also a multi-tab uh, application with navigation. We generate uh, client files, and this is the real IP address, so the server can be run remotely in the office somewhere, and uh, the application can be distributed among the employees, like us. So it's uh, just warming up. We we are just trying to be sure that the server is okay. Yes, it's okay. So we can go to the voting process. Uh, everybody in the group can vote and uh, thus select one of the variants. So we can just use the buttons or virtual keyboard to value some specific factors. At this point, we don't consider cities or variants. We are talking about the importance of factors for me. Number seven means that logistics is important for me, and four means I don't care about budget economy so much. Then, as it's indicated in the title, I am valuing Moscow regarding any f of factors in the list. Yes, it's the Chili's box, and then I value Kiev as a possible variant, and then St. Petersburg. It's obvious that for me the variants are assessed. Then multiply my values by my factor as an expert, and now we'll see who is the champion. Everybody in the group does the same, so we can easily come to a quite reliable solution. Another idea. In my early days of working at the university, I taught students the theory of algorithms. I made them read, made them program, but the best was labs. This is an example of my students' project. This is a VCL application which searches the minimum of a function in step-by-step -step mode interactively using the brute force and Fibonacci numbers algorithm. One student programs and the other just run this application and make interactive search with the comparison of the accuracy and number of steps regarding different methods. Brute force is obvious, while Fibonacci numbers methods should be well illustrated. But this lab makes everything clear. If you are a professor, you have typically at least 25 students. Let them do their programming project in Delphi with FireMonkey. Then it's easy to convert them in iOS applications and be mobile labs for the other students. Students know Delphi OK in contrast to Objective-C. At least 10 students will succeed. One semester, 10 great labs, highly interactive which can be done anytime and everywhere, including in the bath and on the grass. You need only to teach them how to convert some typical VCL interface into mobile ready. Take the main menu to the top, top toolbar and bottom buttons to the bottom toolbar. Left control panel will be screen 1, main chart area will be screen 2, and the bottom lock panel will be screen number 3. Even VCL projects can be easily converted. One more idea to support scientific calculations. Basically, scientists use applications for themselves, and they are often written with C, C++. Like traditional experiments, there are numerical experiments or tests. When you run calculation and wait some hours to find bugs, at later stages or just to restart with new input. In this case, one needs mobile front-end, not to be tightened to the desktop. We can take your C++ Builder project and remain it intact, just adding only data snap server functionality, only some clicks. Then we expose methods to start calculation and see results. You can continue your numerical experiments everywhere and anytime, even during your lecture. This is a simple example of cellular automata. It's a single VCL application, which was then converted into data snap server. It's now of dual nature. One can use it as usual, plus make next steps and get and visualize data. So here, this is a project group consisting of two applications. First, the isolated VCL application, which can be run and which works as a single application without uh, any distortion from the viewpoint of data snap. 
And this is a mobile client uh, built uh, near the application server with the client classes and you can call the exposed methods to visualize uh, with the image or uh, retrieve data for visualization or plan the follow-on calculation. With. So Delphi mobile client is easy to build for C++ application once compilable in C++ builder. In my case I haven't optimized traffic. It's not wise to send pixel by pixel, but you can easily plan and implement rare and compact data transfer. It's wise to implement more mobile specific data visualization with T-chart, T-mesh technique or just simple monitor with a text log. Customer's visualization is also possible. No time to discuss all the possible ideas, just mosaic. I've abandoned RubyCube project for desktop, but now I have three deployments including mobile. And I have ideas how to help people find the solution rather than one more way to be upset. There are many so-called scientific calculators, but they can only do cosine and sinus. Sometimes it's great to have applied calculators with formulas and DBXS on mobile. Once again to business. Sales scripts are very important, but if they are available on mobile, there are special systems to convert scripts into the sequence of forms with dialog logic. But if the scripts are complicated and then useful, Delphi is the best solution plus easy mobile deployment. Many, many mobile IDs around you already. Just accept and implement them. Thank you. Great. There were a couple of questions earlier. Alf asked, when, you, when you're thinking in your application about exporting data, do you export that data as strings or can you export binary formats? And I know we can do things like stream files and other things too, right? So it's so the question about how to optimize the uh, exchange, data exchange between uh, thin client and uh, data snap server, yes? Right. Or even, so or, the, and or even local storage, you know? Uh, local storage. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what, 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 what kind of project uh, uh, we're discussing? Well, if we, he didn't uh, say, he was really just saying, what about in, in exporting, do you export everything as strings? Can you export objects? <clears throat> export? Yes, so uh, our data snap platform is well <clears throat> developed, so you can use JSON notation to for, for data exchange. And uh, we have a technique, uh, so-called plain object transfer, when you are sending just a reference to an object and all the marshalling or converting an object into a JSON and sending and receiving and unpacking the object in memory. It's uh, it's it's uh, clearly uh, discussed in. Uh, in data snap lab, so it's okay, but uh, uh, it should be taken into account that uh, you shouldn't rely on intensive data exchange between thin clients and mobile client, uh, even not because of the internet traffic on maybe da data lags. Uh, it's the uh, question of uh, how many. Uh, I know a lot of uh, desktop projects when uh, uh, ten uh, thousands of records are sending from this database server to a client. It's typical. But uh, it's uh, it's 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 um, it's um, um, not not wise to do this on mobile because I can hardly imagine a user who can who can navigate through maybe a thousand of records uh, with mobile or on iPad. So I guess uh, we should just um, not to send all the data, but uh, to plan accurately the data exchange between the mobile client and the um, server. And we have a number of uh, opportunities like a traditional client server, data exchange between mobile and uh, uh, DBMS server, and um, multi t like data snap. And I prefer, and I'm thinking, um, about data snap server as a mobile backend and it's more flexible and it, it's also good because you can just take your traditional desktop application <coughs> like I did in scientific project, scientific like project and add the data snap server functionality and expose the client so you, you current desktop client, sick client can, can can be a data snap server is very easily so for pilot projects uh, just if you are going to start right tomorrow and show the results the day after tomorrow it's easy to do this on this pattern but then on the next stage after the pilot project or uh, in the next, some beta you can just plan and implement but first you need to think about the scenario of uh, how the mobile user will use 
your application. And after that, you can plan the data transfer data exchange. We have many ways, mm, yes, to send data. So the, the, the question about strings or no strings or JSON is a secondary question. The first is the scenario and then uh, it will be clear what to send and how to pack and how to optimize the traffic. And then there was, an, there was another question JT uh, answered. It had to do with when you're using gestures, can, can you associate gestures with the whole form or can you associate gestures with specific areas of a form and or controls? And the answer is you can associate uh, gestures to wherever you want them, right? Yes, and uh, in, in case of uh, 3D, please uh, start with a 2D form with a viewport. I guess, David, uh, uh, th that was your uh, answer the our internal conference, yes? About, yep. uh, yeah, so thank, thank you very much for the, for, for the hint. I use it effectively. Yeah, absolutely. And more coming up at 10 a.m. with Pavel Glavatsky on multi-tier data snap. He's got a whole presentation in addition um, that'll build on top of the, the ideas for projects that Seva just did. So Seva, thank you very much. Great to have you uh, from, uh, from Moscow. Yes. <laughs> thank you.